you enjoy balloons and want to get into battles too, this video is for you. For the first several rounds of any balloons game, your main focus is going to be to increase this, this number here. That is your eco, and it is the amount of money that we are going to be getting every 6 seconds. Because we're in, you know, the early game and the, the first 1 to 9 rounds, we want to get our eco up as high as we can for the first 9 rounds, while at the same time spending as little money on defense as we possibly can. Heroes also level up per round, so sometimes you want to get them early on, but as a general rule, um, you don't need to worry about that as much. As you can see here, our opponent isn't really sending us uh, much in the way of balloons, and so I'm not going to upgrade my towers at all, and I'm just going to continue sending. It's round 5, and currently my opponent hasn't really sent anything, so I have 450 eco, he probably still has 250. So at this point, every 6 seconds, I am getting 200 more money than him. So even though right now he might have more money in his defense on hand and everything, um, within a couple of minutes, I'm going to have vastly more money than him because I'm able to just minimize my defense and send this money on eco. If you're using farm or if you need to save money, you can instead send uh, these balloons that have only a, a single balloon on their icon. And those are spaced and are generally more cash efficient. They'll still get you some income, but it won't happen as quickly. But they're great for if you want to build up some cash over time. I'm using village as well, but if we were using, you know, say like a banana farm, it, that's also another place where you may want to send spaced eco instead of grouped eco at times. Rounds 10 through about 13 is what I would call the middle game personally, or where it starts at least. This is where we suddenly get a lot of options like leads or these grouped purples that can be pretty hard to defend and you actually have the possibility of you know, rushing your opponent and posing a real threat to them. Even at, like, Hall of Masters, the highest arena, there are a lot of games that are essentially going to be decided by round 13 rushes uh, with a bunch of rainbows. So it's very important to, you know, make sure that you know how to defend round 13 and that you're also looking to rush your opponent if you think that you can get away with it. If you don't think you can kill your opponent outright, you'll definitely want to continue getting eco like this and make sure that you're able to, you know, have even more money for later on in the game uh, when you have more challenging sends like Moabs as well as ZUMGs, DDTs, and everything like that. It's important to keep in mind that, you know, uh, you'll want to have money stocked up in advance of rounds. Currently it's round 16, and so next round mobs will be available down here. And so I want to be sure that I have enough money on hand or the defense ready that I think I can defend mobs. If my opponent can't and I'm looking forward to this and they're just getting eco, um, you know, I'm just going to be able to send mobs and probably win the game or, you know, force them to spend a bunch of money on defense or use a booster, something else like that. This is where a lot of the kind of tug and pull uh, battle two that makes it fun comes in, is trying to figure out in different circumstances where you can rush your opponent or you know where you should just be trying to save up more money to have a more deadly rush later on or you know maybe where even you need to be defensive and figure out how to defend what your opponent might send you while still getting the income that you can it's now around 22 and i think this is probably about the time where you could make an argument that it's it's starting to be late game at this point we can send zmgs we can fortify them and in a couple rounds, we'll be able to send group CMGs and then DDTs and then even BADs. And so this is the point where, you know, at round 22 or so, uh, depending on your strategy and what you think you're going to be able to defend, you want to just completely stop getting eco um, in order to have as much money as possible for some of these later rounds that are usually going to be determined by bigger rushes. It's also worth keeping in mind, my opponent still has 250 eco, I'm pretty sure. So he almost has to rush me soon, because I don't think he's going to be able to survive later rounds. So especially as you reach the higher ranks, you want to not only look at your own defense and what round your strategy can survive to, but also your opponent's strategy to know when they have to rush you if they want to win the game. That's where you want to have the most money possible, so that you can be sure to defend anything that they send, while also being able to send your own rush that they can no longer defend. 
If you go beyond that point, of course, you pretty much just win, unless for some reason you go to round where neither of you can defend, and then things get interesting again. It's currently round 26, and we now have DDTs, so I'm going to fortify this, because looking at my opponent's defense, I don't think he is going to be easily able to defend, and I am just going to boost this, and that should end up winning me the game. A lot of these factors will obviously depend on the different towers that both you and your opponent are using, as well as you know, how you can eco and everything like that, but I hope that this gives you a general idea of how to approach a game of battles too, and what you should be thinking about at different stages of the game. Um, if you want to be sure that you know, you're picking a strategy that's good, uh, on screen now will be a link to another video that will show you how to do that. So that you know you can take the next step and learning how to you know pick your own strategy and have more fun playing battles too.